Good morning, good morning, Rabotai. What a morning it is. Erev Kippur. Unbelievable. What a, what a crazy, crazy year it's been. We find ourselves here again. Mechila uslicha vechapara. We're going to have our sins washed away. We're going to become pure. And of course, we're also going to be judged. So my friends, what a special time it is to be engaging in the process of Teshuvah, Tefillah, Tzedakah. Make sure you do your Teshuvah. Make sure you do your Tefillah. Make sure you do your Tzedakah. Today we are having our drive up until we're going to be doing our drive for the next week for the Torah Center to, uh, to sponsor and to help all the Torah that comes out of this place. Please go to EJSS. Uh, TorahCenter.com www.ejsstorahcenter.com to donate um, for our Torah Center. Any donation is accepted and welcomed and appreciated um, as well. Uh, of course, if a person is donating for a plaque on the Torah Center wall for the year, they are 10,000, 18,000, 26,000, and 36,000. Uh, Azazaku Baruch for all those that have done that. And to begin with that, let's begin with one of our diamond donors for the Daniel S. Loeb Torah Center, um, Tatiana and Sonny Dewar, in loving memory of Lunishmat Sonny's father, Eli Dewar, Eliyahu Ben Sion, Vifaride. Breakfast on the class, also dedicated in loving memory of Lunishmat Yehuda Ben Rachel, on his Azkara, sponsored by his niece Vanessa Dayan. The year of breakfast on the class is dedicated in loving memory of Lunishmat Ruth Orfali Batadela, Alea Shalom, sponsored by her family. What a special zechut for the duration of her year. She has every single day her name is mentioned uh, during a year of, uh, of uh, Shiva uh, in, the, in the context of a Torah class and the zechut of the study of Torah and the, and the betterment of ourselves. For the Rufuah Shalema of Chana Batsem and Fega, Elia Shalom Azab Fortune, and Chana and Chaim Fael Ben Frida. The week of breakfast of the class dedicated loving memory of Sinai Tour, Chosh Bach, Lilun Shmat Sinai Tour Bat Shokrola, for Askara, sponsored by her son Maurice Chosh, and the week of Kobu, sponsored by. Say it with me. David E. Ash. In honor of and your substantial capacity good today and every day. My friends, let us begin. You're getting a little bit uh, juiced? Right? Chills. There's nothing like it. Although I have to say, for anyone that, that has a chance, make sure you're in shul early. Because the tefillah that comes before Kandidre, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful tefillot that we say in the entire year. It's stunning, all the different tunes. Read the English today, not tonight. Read the English today, or if you're Moroccan. Or sorry, Yemenite. That's beautiful. Just get online a little bit today. Listen to some of the tunes. It's one of the most beautiful uh, tefillot. When we say to Hashem, God, all that I have, all that I am is yours. You gave me my arms. You gave me my legs. You gave me my heart. You gave me my tongue. And what did I do with all the gifts that you gave me? I used them against you. Very powerful prayer. But my friends, in all of Am Yisrael, wherever you will go, no matter how different our minagim are, whether your favorite food is mahshi sviha or your favorite food is uh, chant and kugel, right? If you're Ashkenaz, Sefar, Hasidi, Yemeni, uh, Uzbeki, Bukhari, Iraqi, don't make a difference where you're from. All of Am Yisrael tonight will begin Kal Nidre with, to begin Yom Kippur with Kal Nidre. Now the, the Sefarim are filled with many different explanations to explain why Kal Nidre is so important. And we've covered a couple of them in some of the classes. But today, I want to share with you one more opinion, one more idea that's put forward by Rav Yashiv. Allah va shalom. One of the great poskim of our generation. He should be a melitz yosher uh, in Shamayim, that we should all have a, uh, 
שנה טובה מבורכת. תן שלום בארץ, בעזרת השם. ושמי זוכה, to see the coming of Mashiach. So listen to what he says. He says something unbelievable. He says that you know why we say Kan Edre? Because a person does not realize the power of their words. What is the nature of a neder? The nature of a neder is a person says, this is Kodesh. Right? I'm accepting on myself this animal of mine is a korban. You know what happens now if I make a barbecue with that korban? I was just mo'el in hekdesh. The punishment is unimaginable. Imagine I say, uh, this book is forbidden to me, the neder. This book is filled with Torah, by the way. Beautiful, the Torah, misvot, musar. I'm not allowed to use the book. The nature of our words can create new realities. That is what nedarim is. And in order to be able to undo those words, what do we do to undo those words, which then have practical, real-time, real-world real world ramifications in this world? What do we use? Words. Atarat nedarim. Says Revel Yashiv, something unbelievable. I was reading El Chot from Harambam the other day. And Rambam says something very interesting. He says, in order for Kippur and Teshuvah to work for a person, what does he need? He needs to believe that Kippur and Teshuvah bring Kapara for a person. Now, let me ask you a question. Let's say I feel... I'm going to give you the words here. The words that Cain uttered. Gadol avoni minso. What does that mean? My sin is too big to carry. What did Cain say? I can't carry my sin. There's no way I could lift this burden. Cain did not believe in Teshuvah with those words. So what does God tell him? Im tetiv, if you do better, say it. You will be uplifted. If Cain did not buy what God was selling, if you feel, you know something, back in those days, I was so selfish, I was so horrible, I did the unimaginable. I don't believe, I believe I'm beyond redemption. If you believe that, and you know what happens? You are beyond redemption. So a person has to believe in the power of Yom Kippur to bring kapara. Again, you know, I feel sometimes people don't realize what's going on. Why, one of the reasons why we say, is because we're trying to convince you on this day, Stanley, Hashem is going to forgive you. Yitaretchem is going to purify you. Yitaretchem from kol chatotechem, from any sin that you've done. Hashem, I'm going to forgive you today. Lefne amonai titaru. You're not going to be tahor in front of the Las Vegas Commission of in Sin City. You're not going to be tahor. You're not going to be tahor in uh, what's it called in the, the court of. New York City filled with criminals, repeat offenders that we feel incessantly we need to release back onto the streets. My friends, you know where you're going to be, Tahor? In front of God. God will look at you and say, Who are you? What are you? Tahor. Could you imagine? I just want to give you an example of this. If you go to a chupa, when the witnesses come up, the witnesses witness, the chatan put the ring on the finger of the bride. When they witness the chatan put the coin in the hand of the kala. And then the misadeh kiddushin, the rabbi arranged in the kiddushin, he looks at the witnesses, and what do the witnesses say? If they know what they're doing. 
Sometimes they don't know what they're doing. Sometimes you go to a wedding, it's very funny things happen at a wedding. I had a guy once go up to the wedding. I said, I want to invite, I want to invite you up for a beracha. He said, oh, thank you so much. He comes up to the uh, chupa. He says, I'd like to bless the chatan and the kala with long life. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> you have the third beracha, Rohi. <laughs> hey, just read it from the sheet, please. <laughs> So that's people, they're not sure. They're not sure. You had a guy, I was at a wedding once, the guy got up, very confident. Shakol, niyabit baro. I'm looking around for some water for the guy. Shakol baro, baro. Sometimes people don't know what's going on. They're a little bit out to lunch, or they're against, or they're, the pressure's too much. Sometimes the pressure gets to a person. Right? I, I was once, I remember one time, Sammy, Erev Kippur, we can't, can't trash. You got to go Es Mechila from the 8 o'clock minyan now. <laughs> Can we get three more people for Atarat Darim? <laughs> Let's run it back. Go to the videotape. Tabotai. <laughs> Tabotai, sometimes the pressure. The pressure is too much. I was at a wedding once, guy was so pressured, so nervous, instead of saying, Borepi Agefen, he said, I'm Motsi Lechem in Aretz. I'm not joking. <laughs> so what I do, I ran around till I found him a colorful bagel, and I gave him. <laughs> I'm Motsi Lechem in Aretz. My friends, a lot of different things. Yes, it was Baruch Hashem, very Jewish. My friends, a lot of times we get nervous, you might say the wrong thing. So if you turn to the witnesses, and they don't say the wrong thing, what do they say? Anyone remember? Huh? Nope. Mikudeshet b'simato. And they say mikudeshet. They responding to the Mesader Kiddushin. You know what we saw? We saw this woman become mikudeshet. So they state mikudeshet. And then the Mesader Kiddushin, the rabbi, arranging the wedding, repeats after him and he says, mikudeshet b'simato. She's married. B'simato with a good mazal. Good siman. We're going to stand in front of God. Lefne Amonai Titaro. And God's going to say, Look at you. And He's going to say, Tahor. Do you understand the power of that? Now, I want to express something. It's very important. If you don't believe it, that you're going to become Tahor, what would Rambam teach us? You're not going to become Tahor. Why would someone not believe that Kippur or Teshuvah is going to cleanse him? Because you feel like I did something. How could it go away? How could I be clean? How could I undo it? How does that work? My friends, I want to say something. I know you have a very high opinion of yourself. Like I have a high opinion of myself. Sometimes our opinion of ourself, a little too high. But I have a high opinion of myself. However, however, I think we all have a higher opinion of ourselves than God, right? So as an example, if I'm a very wealthy guy, and I say, buy me that car, they might buy me that car. But God is a little bit more powerful than that. God doesn't say, buy me this private jet, buy me that hotel, buy me that house. What does God say? Let there be a house. Baruch she'amar vehaya ha'olam. When God said, let there be light, what happened? There was light. What was there before? Nothing. What was there after? Light. What did God say? Let there be two, a sun and a, and a moon in the sky. What was there? Poof. A sun and a moon in the sky. Instantly. What God says becomes. My friends, so what will happen when God says, Tahor, you will be instantly Tahor. But a person, in order to, to have that, needs to believe it. Says Rebbe Yashiv, we're going to come to a 25 hour period of prayers prayers saying sorry 
Prayers asking for mechila. Prayers asking for slicha v'chapara. The first thing that we need to do is buy what we ourselves are selling. We need to believe in the power of words. So how do we start the holiday? By saying, look what words can create in an eder. And look at the power that words have said the right way, arranged correctly, to undo the reality of Kiddushah, to undo a neder. My friends, I want you to imagine that the book, I know everybody looks at the book, the first thing they look at is, how thick it is. (laughs) I always see, you see, by the way, Look tonight, you'll see people doing it. They take the book, they're like, oh, heavy, okay. They're shooting it like this. Then the next thing they do, how many pages? 1,299 pages. She bifledged, we got to read 1,300. Then the guy's like, oh, Baruch Hashem. Half of the pages are in English. So about 700, Okay. So this month, okay, that's not too bad, right? I think we can deal with that. We're doing this is how we're looking at the book. But my friends, the book is going to save your life. That book is going to save your life. I want you to think of each page in that book. The more pages, the better. Let me give you an example, because we all relate to this. Imagine you call a lawyer, you tell him, listen, I need you a very important business deal. I have to, is there any way you can write? I need you to write up a contract, ironclad, buying this house. I need you to get me a, a getting this, buying this business. Take care of it. Make sure, airtight. Two minutes later, the guy sends you, no problem, a bill, $10,000. He's a good lawyer. And with the $10,000, the bill, is one PDF, another PDF. And what do you see? One page contract with blank lines there, okay? It says at the bottom, contracts.com. <laughs> Had that got you a boilerplate contract or for contracts.com and he's charging you 10K. The contract was one page. His bill was three pages. You look at the guy, you're like, you kidding me? This is what I paid you for? For a one pager or for contracts.com? If I get a contract from you for $10,000, I want it to look like this. Because the longer the contract is, written by my lawyer, the more I have protection. It says on that page that if I do not turn into a goat, On Tuesday night at 12, I'm absolved from bank penalties. And you should have read the small print. My lawyer covered me. He wrote in things maybe that might not have even happened. Not only does it protect me from an earthquake and from a tornado, it protects me from Sharknado. Right? It's protecting me from everything. This book that you're going to hold in your hands tonight, you should look at it and say, I wish it was bigger. You know, I I, I point this out all the time. There's only two people who ask this question in this way. Two people in the world. When did you get out? People who get out of prison. (laughs) And people who leave shul on Rosh Hashanah and Kippur. Oh, you went to the... Oh, when did you get out? I did five to ten. The rabbi let us out for good. Be- he let us out for good behavior. You understand? We're looking at it the wrong way. The more time you spend on that day, the better the whole year is. I quoted in Shul, on Rosh Hashanah, a beautiful Magen Avraham. The Magen Avraham writes, Rav Biederman brings him down. Magen Avraham writes that in the story of Yosef and Paro, what happened with Paro? Paro dreams, seven cows, seven cows. 
all of a sudden he realizes some of them are very skinny, right? Some of them are very fat. They're the same cows. Why should these be skinny, these be fat? He didn't realize they were Ozempic cows. <laughs> but either way, he doesn't know what to do with it. So what does he do? He wakes up Yosef. They get him out of the boar. They bring him down to the palace. What day was that day? Chachamim tell us. Roshana. Says the Magen Avraham. You know what that means? That means that on that day, on Rosh Hashanah, that year, it wasn't that we decided on Rosh Hashanah what the year would be like. The next 14 years were decided. Do you hear that? Let's look back at our Machzor now. You got enough pages? Imagine being locked into something for 14 years. Now, of course, a person could change anything ever, but whatever gets locked in on Rosh Hashanah is very hard to undo. We got to stop with this. Run through the prayers faster. What time are we getting out? We're going to have a break. Relax. People are so anxious with the break. What are you going to do with the break? Where are you going? Uh, you're playing tennis? What are you doing? What's happening exactly? Where do you need to run to? Right? You need to run somewhere so you can talk to somebody else and ask him when he got out. <laughs> Sorry, Rabbi, I have an appointment. But I need to run my poll. I'm taking an Ipsos poll. All the shuls in the city want to find out where I'm going next year. Where are you going? Where are we running? I want to share with you, we have a, a woman in the shul. She's not a Rebetzin. She does not sit down the whole Yom Kippur. We have someone else in the shul. She has a Ta'anit Dibur. She does not speak one word that is not Torah or Tefillah or Tehillim the whole Yom Kippur. There was a fellow who was struggling with his leg. His leg was hurting him. I come to him, I see him. He's leaning on the thing, standing the whole kippur. That's the way we need to be looking at this. I'm not telling you you got to take this on. I'm just saying, recognize that this is the biggest opportunity ever. If I told you I could get you an audience with the most powerful person in the world, how, how long do I have? Imagine I tell you one minute. Forget it. You lose your mind. What are you going to squeeze in that minute? You have an anxiety attack because you can't think what to cut out. What if I told you, no, take your time. Think about all the things that you want, that you need, all the things you want to have in your life, all the things you want to not have in your life. Take your time. Let me give you a whole day. You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to cancel anything that's in your calendar so there'll be nothing else on your mind. There's no makshi at home. There's no kusab jibin. There's no drinks. There's no tequila. Nothing. No coffee. You're not going home, your wife. No marital relations. No, uh, can't take a shower. I'm going to take everything else you could possibly have to do or be concerned about. I'm going to take it away. And then I'm going to give you one thing to do. What's today? Mechila, selicha, kapara. We got to get excited about Yom Kippur. We got to get pumped for Yom Kippur. The Gemara says that there are no happy days, right? Not like the song, that's something else. There's no happy days like Tu Be'av and Yom Kippur. What did they do on Tu Be'av, my friends? Please only answer Amen if you're listening to this live. Baruch Atah Adonai. Elam Elach HaOlam Shehako Nihia Baro. Amen. Amen. I almost said Shebarah Lechvodo. Okay. Guys, what do we do? What happens on Tu Bav? It's a day where all the singles would go and they would find each other and they would write and they would get married. That's what it says on Tu Bav. My friends, that's what Yom Kippur is. When your soul and your neshama go out on a date and they begin a new relationship. You know, when you go out on a date, it's very different. Date you is very different than real you. 
Now, I'm not saying you're sketching, catfishing, pretending you're somebody else. I'm not saying, who are you? Oh, uh, me, I, uh, I own three banks. I'm not, not when you're not lying. But you're clean shaven. You don't smell like a behemoth. Right? You're not wearing those comfortable shoes. You're wearing the nice shoes. Right? You look at yourself a couple times in the mirror. You present the best way that you can. You're a little bit more polite. You open the door. Right? You offer to cover the check. Unless she's a feminist. In which case you tell her you can't have your cake and eat it too. Which is it? Either way. Side note. That you is presenting the very best you. Tu Ba'av and Yom Kippur is a very happy day. Because we see ourselves in the best version, in the best way that we could be. And then God looks at us and says, Tahor. And instantly, we become that best version. It's nuts! That's what the day is. So my friends, we need to be very excited. Day of Kapara. We need to come to shul with energy. What do you do if you came to shul and you got no energy? Oof. Oh my gosh. I remember, it was last year or two years ago. Came to shul, shahari. I'm like, you know when you're doing that with your eyes? You can't see, your eyes are closing. So what the first thing you do? I tell my son, what do you do? Stand up and do jumping jacks. Get up, do jumping jacks, get your blood moving, walk around, stand outside on the porch. Walk this day is too important, you can't waste it. Figure out how to get up. And, and, and if you missed a little bit and you're down on yourself, I can't believe it. I was half asleep when we said this prayer. I missed out on the chance. Use that fuel to wake yourself up for the next part. Okay, now I got to double down. If I missed the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, like the Royals last night, I missed the whole beginning of the game. I gotta show up late. I gotta score the runs. Let that push you more. My friends, this is the energy of this day. And if you're upset that you can't focus, God looks at it and says, look, oh, Hazit. Look how much my son is trying to focus. Abus Hayato. Everybody in this room right now is probably ADD. You what? <laughs> Everybody's ADD. I was saying the other day, you know, when we were growing up, there was a, that one kid, you know? The one kid is... Now, has he, there's one kid, he's not ADD. And there's left out of everything. <clears throat> Everyone goes out to take Ritalin, he's sitting there by himself. He gets bullied. <laughs> Very quickly, either way. My friends, you think God doesn't see your ADD? How upset you are that you didn't focus? You think God doesn't treasure that? That you're upset, that you're sad, that you missed the chance? That's also special. The Yetzirah will do anything. And I want you to catch him this Yom Kippur. Because he's the biggest scam artist. He'll do anything and everything to take your mind off of the book that's going to save your life. The pages, the feelings, the thoughts. He'll make sure that the guy sitting next to you has his elbow on your armrest. What's your first thought when you get there? Oh, uh, one of these, okay. Then you're looking at it, you put your arm passive aggressively on the front part. No, you ever do that on an airplane? I hereby claim this part of the armrest in the name of Spain, right? You, you know, right? You know, you, jockeying for position. A minute later, the guy's out, still there. You're like, I can't believe I'm sitting here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like this the whole Kippur. Oh, now you missed half a calendar. Oh. Hey, look at this guy. You start thinking to yourself, I can't believe this guy is doing on Kippur. Who does that? What kind of person? Now you're judging the eye guy, right? Then you turn to the person next to you. You're like, you believe this guy? La Shonara. The Yetzirah, he's so good. He's so good. Right? A guy's bidding, he bids money, you turn to the guy next to you, show off. What for? What'd you do? What'd you gain? 
When you bid, oh, you the Shem Shamai. When he bids, Shada, showboating. Did you see the way he lifted his fingers like that? What is that? Beware. This is one day we need to make sure. Now, I'll tell you one thing, and I'll end with this. The Gemara says that the numerical value of the word has Satan is. Let's count it. A, five. Sheen, Tet, here we go, Noon, 50, 364. Say the Chachamim, because Hasatan has power on 364 days a year. Now let me be clear. This does not mean that there ain't no Yetzirah on Yom Kippur. What, on Yom Kippur you didn't shuf the G? On the way out, on the way in, you didn't do that? On Yom Kippur, you didn't uh, say Lashon Ara, you didn't say about how the rabbi's speech was terrible, the Hazan was too long. You did say that. Who, who said that? Not the Yetzara. Yetzara is there. He just doesn't have power. Imagine losing to a guy who's powerless. That's like losing to the Mets. <laughs> Did that divide the room? Okay, mechila. Selicha, mechila. Powerless. Imagine losing to a guy powerless. Could you imagine that? Anyone? You're playing basketball. There's nine adults and one child. Anyway, what happens? The child winds up taking defense on you. The game's on the line. They pass you the ball. You're three feet taller than the guy. You're standing there with the ball under the basket. And you go to shoot, and the guy jumps, and he stuffs you. You are never living that down. The Yetzirah on Yom Kippur is a, this big. He's so small. Punch him in the face, and let's get over with it. Tell him not today, not today, and let's get over with it. It's too, it's too important. If someone calls you, and you're in the meeting of your life, with Walmart, Target, uh, Vornado, I don't know what the I don't know what you're in, you know what the thing is, you know what's your item, you know, grill point, what's important to you? I don't know. You're in the meeting of your life. You get a phone call. You look at the phone call. What are you checking to see if it's your wife? It's not your wife. You're gonna answer it. It's not your parents. It's not your in-laws. It's not your friend. It's not. It's some guy that you used to know in primary school. And all he did all day was give you wedgies and beat you up and bully you. You taking that call in the middle of the meeting? I'm blocking the guy's number. Yetzirah is that guy. All he's ever done is bully you, beat you up, take opportunities from you. And now he's calling trying to get your attention on the most important day of the year. What are we doing? Block, block the number. Hashem should bless us to take advantage of this incredible day, to use it for teshuvah. My friends, the Yisod Vishor Shavuda writes, it's important to bid for Aliyot if you can, to buy Aliyot, to give Siddhaka on Kippur as well, to try and do everything you can to push yourself. Don't waste the day. Baruch Amen. Amen.